prints and for small prints. Um, so um, we talk about the um, the departments in the Midwest. Mm -hmm. I mean, my question is, why do you think the Midwestern uh, schools at a point in time developed yeah. so strongly? And, I think the Midwest print departments have a phenomenal tradition. Think about University of Wisconsin, Iowa, Illinois, Indiana, Michigan, several schools in Ohio. I mean, it, it just was such a strong and continues to be such a strong tradition. What happened, I think, among other things, is that each school would have a printmaker or two. You know, there was a kind of distribution around the Midwest and they could build these very strong departments. There were, a lot, there were a lot of resources after World War II for buying presses. Then the GI Bill brought you these mature, interesting students. A lot of them men, and I do think that there is a male affinity for presses, which is fine and good, and I think it helped printmaking. I think the fact that there was this beautiful piece of equipment is not trivial. Okay, I have an itchy nose. We're going to stop for a second. Um, the hair, I'm a little... Uh, uh, is it the dog? Yeah, it's the dog. I'm sorry. Um, I started with saying that the fact that there's this beautiful piece of equipment, that's a great statement. Okay. I think the fact that there's this beautiful piece of equipment, that, the, that one could buy presses, litho presses, etching presses, that, that was part of the fascination of setting up these print departments. You have a very beautiful press sitting behind me, a French press, one of the last to be made by that company. The, um, in Los Angeles and California now, I am dismayed to find that some people have dismantled their print shops in favor of digital studios. Now, resources are always a little short, and you know, schools have a tendency to cannibalize one thing to create another. We have not done that at USC, and I'm very glad we haven't. I, I don't think it's what's happening in the Midwest, but they are a little less um, crunched for space, among other things. And I just hope that these strong Midwestern departments, which I think are the engine of creating a lot of printmakers in the United States, will continue to thrive. So you've seen a lot of the work being produced now by students across the country and, and, in, and in Europe and all mm -hmm. over the world now because we're all yeah, so connected. connected. Um, do you see any trend now in terms of what's happening? Well, I've been to, um, what, what's, what school were we at for that SGC? SG. Which, uh, which one? Um, yeah, University in Richmond, Virginia. University of Virginia. The last SGC, SGC? Yeah. S Southern Graphics, SGC, yeah. SGC, okay. The last SGC conference, uh, Southern Graphics uh, Council, meetings that I went to, which are all huge. I mean, it says Southern, but it's really the big national organization for printmakers. I was at the meeting in Richmond, uh, University of Virginia, and that was very telling, I thought. I mean, there, there was a lot of enthusiasm. There were a lot of young printmakers. And that, you know, so you're, you're, you know you're in a vital organization if you have a nice age range. That's very important. But there were so many talks that were really about printed matter rather than printmaking. And I understand the desire to, you know, make a wider circle. But as I said, on the panel that I was on, if we lose physical touch with our medium, if we are not working against the resistance that printmaking provides, you know, with against your burin, your etching needle, working with the lithostone with all its mysteries, I think we are going to lose something. I think we are going to even out our vocabulary in ways our visual vocabulary in a way that is not good for printmaking. And I think it's I extremely important to, to keep in physical touch with the means of production. Okay. Um, 
Well, you've described the change. You want to address some, what's, what is your feeling about digital printmaking and computer and? <laughs> I think digital <clears throat> okay I think digital printmaking is fine. I mean it's great and it's another tool. It does things in a different way. It has a different look. But if everybody does it, there's a tendency to kind of even out your effects, a tendency to look the same. Um, you're cutting yourself off from a lot of visual possibilities. So I just want a rich mix. I don't want to lose the old techniques um, with digital coming in. I also think that the computer decides certain things for you. It takes away certain choices. I, I think that is dangerous. And also, I think we learn through making, through actual physical contact. Um, you know, you don't want to make love with gloves on. <laughs> so you don't want to do printmaking without some actual physical manipulation of your means. I think your results are different. I think you integrate what you've learned in a different way. And I just think it should be part of it. And that if you do have a very digital practice from time to time, you should do something that's not digital. What advice would you give to young students, artists, print, you know? What is my advice? Um, pick your schools carefully. They are not only going to be uh, the source of your teachers, but also the source of your milieu, and that's important. Um, the friends you make in college and in your um, MFA program are going to be your network. If you want to um, make art in a certain area of the country, it's pretty wise to go to graduate school there. It's also probably smart to do your undergrad and grad in a different area of the country or the world uh, in order to kind of learn different things. I think we, cer we still have some regional attitudes, some of which can be quite interesting. and. Uh, I think there are interesting printmaking programs all around the country, certainly in the Midwest. There's great strength, but University of Tennessee with Beauvais Lions, that's a phenomenal program. Um, Arizona State University has a great tradition. There are schools in California that have strong printmaking traditions like uh, Cal State Long Beach. So you want to pick, particularly your graduate study, the location is very important and who are you studying with, you know, because it's probably just one or two, three people and they're going to be formative, important influences on your work. And then also very important who the other students are. Um, I noticed that listening to you talk today, that you've, when you were dissatisfied with a certain uh, challenge or, or event, you, mm -hmm. you went out of the typical, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I think today for a student to say, well, I don't really like what's happening at Michigan, I'm going to Europe, although some yeah. of them may, yeah. do you think that kind of mindset is in the mind of young people today, like, to go out and to the world, and, and that mm. there, there are supports for them? I think, I think most students have the opportunity to study a semester abroad, which is great. Um, I'm connected to Santo Reparata in Firenze. I've taught there, and uh, that's a great program. I think, at the very least, you should do that. My daughter did um, the Centro in Rome, not as a printmaker, but as an art historian. So these are really valuable experiences. It worries me that the world has become somewhat more homogenized. But on the other hand, there's still a lot of rich differences between places, and, and you, you want to explore that. I think the main thing about my story is that I tended to be stubborn, <laughs> but with a sense of humor. So if people said no to me, I tried to find a way around it. Uh, I didn't necessarily take no for an answer if I thought I was really right uh, and they were wrong. 
And uh, I think that kind of confidence is very important. Sometimes you have to do it with some diplomacy, some humor, and sometimes you, you just get angry. But mostly, actually, <laughs> the, the humor method works the best. <laughs> get somebody to laugh with you now. Isn't that silly that you really aren't letting me do X? <laughs> and pretty soon, you've changed their mind. Is there anything that you, um, you've, you've mentioned a lot of these in your conversation. Is there... Um... By the way, it's very useful as a dean. <laughs> all those things, all that stubbornness has come in very handy. <laughs> your sense of humor at the... Well, okay, one question and, we'll, and then if there's something else you can yeah. think of. Do you have any questions? I just wanted to um, redo one piece, but yeah. when you're... Yeah, right, okay. There's a piece you were talking about, that instructor. Keith Acapol? No. Oh, oh, the guy that... When we started Emmanuel that, Jacobson? No, the guy that told you you, you couldn't get a... Uh, Phil Larkin? No, I'm no. sorry. It was one of the ones when we first started back up again after yeah. our break, and you were trying to remember his name. Oh, Joaquin. Joaquin. Oh, Harold right. Joaquin. Okay. Harold there was Joaquin. a problem with um, some lighting issue on that one. If you so, oh, you okay. Do that again, if you okay. capture that again. Okay. Yeah, say okay. Uh, Harold Joaquin at the Art Institute. Okay, okay. Okay, so... Yeah. One of the... One of the great resources at the Art Institute of Chicago was the curator of prints and drawings, Harold Yakim. He was of that generation of Jewish-German print curators who were forced out of Germany in the late 30s and who benefited museums across the United States. And uh, he was in charge of the print and drawing department for many years. Not only did he have a wonderful eye and a vast knowledge because the print room in the Chicago Art Institute is, uh, you know, is just wonderful, has great depth to that collection. But he also wanted printmakers to meet each other. And he introduced me, as a matter of fact, to Keith Acapol. I mean, he wanted us to meet because he felt our work had some common ground. Okay, um, I had two questions. Okay, because of your, um, your accomplishments in, in the academic field, and in the commercial world, too. But um, can you, could you sort of, what's your perspective on academia today mm -hmm. in terms of when you began to teach, not so much the opportunities for and against women, but the minutia of budgets and what the mm -hmm. climate of cutbacks? Mm -hmm. and, uh, mm -hmm. uh, could you give a little perspective on that? Because that's. I have a very um, California or even Los Angeles perspective on art schools. We are arguably the most competitive market for art schools in the country and we have such a wonderful cluster of schools. And we've thrived because there's so many industries in Los Angeles that need creative people and visual people. Not only, you know, maybe the obvious things in another community where you go into an advertising agency, but, you know, there's game design and toy design and all the things that people do in the movie industry and the TV industry. So we've been able to absorb a lot of students as well as, you know, the percentage of students who really become serious about being studio artists and having exhibitions. And uh, Los Angeles, the region now has the highest number of artists um, per capita in the United States, not surprisingly. And so, you know, even though we are, um, you know, feeling the downturn to some extent. I think as a region, we're feeling it somewhat less. The movie industry is still doing fine because of the, that, you know, ticket is not, it's not like buying a car, it's buying, you know, what, a $12 or a $10 movie ticket. So fortunately, uh, as in the Great Depression, the movie industry is not suffering too much. And that's the great engine in Los Angeles of our economy. The, I think, we also at USC have the advantage of being a private school, and so we're not dependent on the legislature, and that is a huge advantage. The legislature is, in California, is acting nuts and uh, making, I think, some very damaging cuts to education in general. So, you know, I mean, some things have been frozen. We had a new building planned um, that we are not breaking ground for. But it'll happen later on, and uh, so I think uh, I'm pretty optimistic, and I certainly would not encourage um, 
Oh, I'm sorry. I don't. I didn't mean to say that. We don't. This is not. Yeah. Really okay. Uh, so don't worry. Okay. I'm just trying to speak. Well, I, I don't. I wouldn't discourage any young person from giving up their dream of being an artist or a designer uh, because of the economy. I think uh, those aspects will come back or are already pretty healthy, uh, as in the design field. And it's just really important to follow your dream over the long term. Okay, and then I have um, one more question. Sure. Oh, I wanted you, to, um, I wanted you to, to introduce yourself again. And the other night when you were telling us, the kids, about what USC has, the different schools mm -hmm. that you're in charge yeah. of, you oversee. Yeah. And then I want you to talk about yourself as an artist, what your mm -hmm. work is about. So if we do have work that I interface in. So say your name again okay. and explain what the School of mm -hmm. Art is at USC. Okay. The okay. I'm Ruth Weisberg. I'm an artist. And I'm also dean of the Roski School of Fine Arts at University of Southern California. University of Southern California has a wonderful environment for the arts. It's very um, encouraging and supportive. We have five art schools. Each has a different dean uh, who reports directly to a provost. If you know anything about academia, that's very important that you are not in a hierarchy where you have a lot of people between you and the provost. And so we have um, the Thornton School of Music, where my son went to school and the School of Theater, which is ranked in the top five in the country. We have the very famous top-ranked um, School of Cinematic Arts that George Lucas has been so supportive of. And uh, we have a wonderful School of Architecture. So it's, it's, we do a lot of collaborative things, but we are our own separate entities. And that gives us a fantastic opportunity to uh, do innovative things. Okay. And then you were telling someone who didn't know you or a non-artist person yeah. about what your work is about. Uh -huh. and your, if you sort of lay out a description yeah. and then that would As an artist, I think it's very important uh, what tools you choose, you know, how, how you make your work visual. That's going to be your vehicle. And I work primarily in drawing, printmaking, and painting. In each medium, I try for a kind of visual richness. Uh, I want my work to be very atmospheric, extremely tactile.